people. My story starts in the hotel where I worked. It was the Park Plaza Hotel in New Orleans on Canal Street. Just seven blocks up was the Mardi Gras scene. <laughs> That's how close I was to everything. We still had like 385 guests in the hotel. Some were doctors from the hospital close to the hotel, which was Tulane. There were patients in there. Um, families of the 30 employees that actually stayed in the hotel to work. Because, you know, we had to still feed the guests and take care of the people that were there out of town who actually got stuck there who couldn't go back. Everything seemed fine the night before. We fed everybody during the restaurants, uh, made sure everybody was taken care of, got prepared, you know, we got water and food and storage and just got ready for the storm. We closed up the restaurant about one o'clock. I went upstairs exhausted. The next thing I know, about six o'clock in the morning, my kids wake me up and they rush me to the window and here comes the storm. I could see everything, stuff flying around. And then that's when tragedy happened. You know, the storm passed, we went to sleep. We thought everything was gonna be okay and they started pounding on the doors in the morning, the next morning of the hotel rooms and they were like, everybody up, everybody up, we're flooded, we're flooded in and rush to the window and the waters were over the top of the cars. Then you just hear everybody in the hotel panicking, saying, what are we gonna do? Where's food, where's water, you know? And then we heard this little transistor radio yelling, the levees broke, the levees broke. And that's when um, our security called a meeting there and we met with the police and some of the fire people that were staying in the hotel. And they said, um, this is serious. So we started to knock on the doors and telling everybody, you know, we're going to feed them at least three meals a day and provide them with water and do the best we could. With a skeleton crew of only 30 people who actually decided to stay and 385 guests and who knows how many more came in. Some people came off the streets, you know, walked through the water into the hotel. That morning when we walked down for the meeting, the thing that hit me the hardest was seeing a body float into the hotel. And it was a woman and she was dead and swollen. And that's when I realized, you know, this is, this, this is something serious and I don't know what to do, you know. Just a sense of there's no really security, you know. What am I going to do with my kids? How am I going to get home? How am I going to get out of here? and still trying to live up to my responsibilities there. You know, feed everybody in the hotel, take care of everybody. I mean, we tried. We went and knocked on the doors and told them we're gonna feed them and people were waiting the line and, you know, some people wanted to cut and fight just like, just like kids, you know, people wanted to be, make sure they're gonna be fed. I remember on the second day, there were people, elderly people and patients who couldn't come down the 16 flights of stairs and go eat. And we were taking trays, plates of food to families who couldn't walk down. And this person smacked the food out of my hand and said, I know you're gonna take that to your family. You guys don't care about us. And in my head, I'm like, if I, if I didn't care about these people, then I'd be in that room with my family, taking care of my kids. But you know, just inside of me, you know, they're people too, and I'm here to help. I'm here to help them as well as my own. And by the third day, I was on the sixth floor and I was looking out, and my phone was still working, my Alto. I had called my mom that morning, and she said that they had told her that we had been rescued already when they called trying to find us. And I told her, no, mom, we're still here. You know, we're all still here. I'm in the sixth floor on the third night. And we were looking out. And I could just see helicopter lights and little fires and just water. And it looked like Matrix and War of the Worlds and Waterworld all together. You know, and I'm just like, what am I going to do? Am I ever going to get out of here with my kids alive?
That night we did security walks and we walked up and down the floors and we heard this crying. And we told people, don't come out in the nighttime because it's too dark. And the fire escape, there was a little girl. She was about, she had to be about 14 years old. Someone had raped her. And she was all bloody. And I remember this guy, he was my director. His name was William and another security guard. She was, the girl was so scared and she needed to go to the hospital. So he picked her up and he walked her down the stairs and he put her on a, a air mattress and floated her to the hospital. Everybody was going crazy then, everybody was Losing it. People didn't want to stay in line for water and food. They wanted to fight and argue. And and then on the fourth day, people were shooting at the helicopters. So they stopped the rescue efforts. And then we had some friends who had a sister who worked at Tulane. And they were still evacuating Tulane. And they were accepting the employees' families to leave on the helicopters. My co-worker's sister said she would say that we're part of her family so we could get rescued. We tracked through the water, we walked to Tulane, and when we got there, we were so close to being rescued. I mean, we were literally so close. We had just got our armbands and we were sitting in line with everybody ready to get rescued in a helicopter. And then someone took the hotel under a hostage situation. And we sat on the floor for two hours, just waiting. And the military, when they finally got it under control, they said nobody else is leaving, only the doctors and patients. So we had to go back through the water, back to the hotel. I was sitting on the second floor and we were getting ready to pass more water out to the hotel guests again, you know, we would deliver gallons of water up and down those stairs and so make people could flush toilets and have water to drink and I heard something, it kind of sounded like arguing and then it sounded kind of like firecrackers and then there was a pillar, it's about this wide and I had to walk by it. And someone shot into the hotel and I just felt all the powder go and hit my face. <laughs> and then my coworker said, his name was Wayne, he said, hit the ground. He said, hit the ground, they're shooting, they're shooting. And someone was trying to break in because we still had money and food and water and they were trying to they were trying to take it over